All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Kerbal Exoplanets mod, which is being made by forum user Eric L. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a number of new strange worlds added to a couple of new star systems. And you guys know me, I love planet packs that add in new star systems. Thus we're here, and into the tracking station we go, where we'll head to the first of our new star systems which I should mention right off the bat here that this is still very much a work in progress as currently this is version 0.1 so we will have changes and hopefully additions in the future personally I'd love to see some new star systems added as I really do enjoy these but who knows if that'll happen or not but for now we start with the Keldo star system which has a star very similar Similar to our usual Kerbal, though with some planets around it that are, um, interesting. And I like it. So the first of those planets is a lifeless here, which is, well, you know, lifeless. Predominantly because it's so freaking close to the star. I mean... Yeah, that's not exactly a place where you want to have a summer vacation at. That, um, <laughs> oh boy, you will die. No atmosphere on the planet. Overall, a uh, pretty small radius of 800, well, actually, that's a fairly large, 803 kilometer radius, and is just a really, really hot freaking place to visit. Fun place, though. Fun place. And according to the uh, little flavor text, yeah, the Kerbal scientists have no idea how it got there, which is always fun. Now, the next planet we have is Jeremy, which is a glorious purple color. And I love the uh, sort of flavor text for this thing. Basically, it is a planet that does have life as it has a lovely atmosphere. And it is a home to a whole host of unicellular life. Thus, the purple color. All the little microorganisms apparently have started... Um, you know, making it visibly different, which is quite cool. Now, of course, Jeremy does have a small moon, Virum, which also does have an atmosphere, though it's a very thin ammonia atmosphere, uh, which apparently does have some ammonia-based microorganisms on it, again, according to the flavor text. Very, very fun. Very small planet, though, with a radius of 40 kilometers, or, well, rather, moon. I think I called it a planet just now, but no, it is, in fact, a moon. And, uh, yeah, it's quite a nice little place. A little bit dull in the coloring and the topography, but you know what? Hey, thin ammonia atmosphere. If that's what you like, that's what you get. Now, the next is one of my favorite worlds in this pack, Ringler. I love a good planet with a ring around it. And, um, yeah, it's a pretty cool gas giant. Lovely ring. And, of course, it's not exactly someplace where you want to try and land, because, I mean, um, gas giant. But where you could land is on one of its small moons, Rexter, which is just basically an asteroid that got caught in the ring system, and oh, I love this place. I've got a little uh, ion space probe around it so that we can get a closer look at it later, and it's just a gorgeous place with a beautiful view of a nice-looking gas giant and an even more impressive ring which is just fun. Now, we do have another moon here called Fungler, which does have an atmosphere and is amusingly colored because apparently the whole planet is covered in fungus. Like its counterpart, Jeremy, it, um, yeah, it's just covered in a lot of microorganisms and it's, uh, odd. Odd, but fun. And the last of the moons here is Windwe, which is, um... Well, it's it's water planet slash water moon, and it's awesome. I love the idea of an entire planet of water because it's just more interesting to try and land on. I mean, imagine trying to build a base on just a giant ocean that you have to get to another star to reach. And of course, it also has two tiny moons of its own, which are some asteroids which were caught in its gravity, which are a Lee right here, and a slightly larger one of Woot right here. Uh, or at least I think it's slightly larger, 15 kilometers there. Which one's that size? 10 kilometers. Yes, it is slightly larger by 5 kilometers kilometers of a radius. Well, there we go. Now the next star system we get in this mod is the 
Kendalon, which has a uh, nice red giant, which apparently, according to the flavor text on this one, is nearing the end of its life. Oh no! And the first planet that we have is Kadar, which used to be, according to the flavor text, a habitable world until the star began to expand. And now it is a lifeless rock. It does still have somewhat of an atmosphere, but really isn't habitable anymore, as it is just a giant dust world world, or, well, desert world, rather. And, uh, yeah, nice place, though it still has an ice cap, interestingly. Hmm, all right. Desert with an ice cap. I mean, I'm assuming that's ice. Well, we'll roll with it. All right, the next planet is Naboon, which is just a big gas giant, so, you know, there you go. Get a good orbit around it, but again, would not suggest landing on it. And then we have Minon, which, oh yes, I have to zoom in, it's really, really tiny. There we go, it is a surprisingly dense comet that just happens to be orbiting this star. So, uh, it would be quite interesting to land on. Though it is, now that I look at the radius size here, smaller than either Li or Woot, but uh, is much more dense than them. And uh, yeah, that is the last of the planets and stars added in by Kerbal Exoplanets. I really, really do enjoy this little pack. It's not exactly the biggest pack of planets and stars, but they are pretty nicely made. I love the uh, flavor text on all of them. I think it was very well done, uh, especially on the like lifeless world etc and again I love worlds with rings so yeah I had to of course put a uh, probe around this so we can get a nice beautiful shot which as you probably will have figured out by now is typically what I have as my uh, video picture on the thumbnail good times but yes we have the glorious ringler with the asteroid rexter being pulled into its rings and just a gorgeous shot of everything and of course kendalun there in the background far far away oh nay we can actually even see the water world that's actually closer than i expected really it's actually visible well, I mean, it, I guess it is one of its moons, now, which I just remembered. Oh, yes, the water world is actually a water moon of this particular planet. Wow, there's my memory for you, folks. There is my memory indeed. But yes, it's a pretty cool little pack with some great star systems that would make a fun place for you to go and visit on any of your interstellar voyages. And it's got some great looking places, some fun and challenging things to land on. It would be quite the uh, experience to land here on Rexter, for instance. And of course, that uh, water moon over there. I just, I want to send a boat there. <laughs> One day, one day, I will send an armada to Windwe. Uh, but yeah, that is really it for this video, guys. A fun little pack that you should definitely go and check out for yourself. And if you'd like to, you can take a look at the link in the description as always. But that is going to be it for today. I hope you have enjoyed. And of course, that you do come back for our next episode when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for for watching my friends and as always have a good one